Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jigis and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be stepping back to Siemens S1200 series PLC. We're going to be checking out the next module that is part of a family-ish, well not actually-ish family, but not ish family. And that is going to be Sivarex 231, their uh, uh, weigh module. So uh, what does it do? It weighs stuff. So you connect the load cell to it and you can waste up with it and do whatever you want to do with the weights. So uh, yeah, we will be checking that uh, unit out today and there's two ways of controlling this unit is you can you can use it with the PLC, which is 200 cents PLC, or you can use it without the PLC. So uh, there's both options, I'm going to show you in a minute how to you get from one another. And once we're going to go through the wiring and we're going to jump onto the laptop and uh, power fire up the Silver Tool V7, which unfortunately it's not free. You have to buy that from Siemens or whatever the distributors they use. So, which is roughly about two to three hundred pounds here in the UK. Again, very much depends. There's such a variety of places you can get the software from. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, which will allow you to commission the controller. The key, what I want to show you in this video, is how to establish communications with the controller using Siva tool because they have a... Uh, the IP thing is something that yeah, I want to show you uh, how to get to uh, connect to it and sort of make sure that your laptop is able to connect to it. So that's what we're going to do, uh, what we are going to be more or less concentrating once we've done the wiring aspect of it. And when it comes down to using the, the actual software itself and calibrating your system and things like that, I will leave two, one or two videos in the description below, this was made by Siemens, and it's really good videos. They've done a very great job for it, explaining how to use it. And so uh, do check out if you want to commission your controller with the Siva tool. Often, because Siemens has already done the programs and softwares uh, for uh, this uh, specific uh, particular control, which you're gonna be checking out in the next video, people don't tend to, you, you don't need to have Siva tool because you can do it without it so but that we're going to check out in the next video we're going to be talking about the hmis and getting the programs and things like that which is by the way free of charge from siemens again that's for the next video so that's what we're going to do today again do check out the description below i'll all leave the manuals and about this uh, specific unit and things like that and uh, any other related information that I do believe will help you in any possible way and i will leave this video in the s400 series plc a playlist again do check it out we've done a lot of work on s1200 series plc with a lot of different units i mean I, I know there's quite a lot more to do but we are progressing slowly but surely so without further ado let's get started <music> Right, here we are. So uh, there's the controller. As you can see at the moment, my controller is not connected to the PLC at all because I want to show you something uh, once we start it up. But the first, let's go uh, through uh, the wiring. As you can see down here, these, these blocks in here, L1, L2, uh, L1, uh, 1L, 1L, 1M, 1M. It's pretty much your uh, line and the new, uh, well, plus and a minus for your DC supply. Obviously, this is a 24 volt DC supply. Uh, as you can see, these two AQ and AQ, which is going to be right here, there in the bottom. The one bummer about this uh, this particular controller it's, it, is, it itself is it, it's very, you literally have to count. So you've got one, two, uh, and then you got three and four. They have to go down there and count one, two, three, four, because really, just really, you can't really see where uh, everything is down there, which which is which. So you do have to count this, so you sort of one, two, three, and that'll be your analog minus. As basically these are for your analog outputs in here. So and as you can see down here, we have a signal plus minus, a sense plus minus, exe plus minus. These are for your load cell. And there's two types of load cells you can use, which is a four wire load cells and six wire load cell. Both of the load cells can be used. And my load cells could be directly connected, directly connected to the controller. We're going to get to that wiring in a minute. And this P and PR, that is your calibration lock. So basically, if you don't want any settings to be changed and you want that to be uh, sort of a, a way, uh, sort of locked away, you just put the jumper between these two and no one's going to be able to change anything within your system unless that jumper has been removed. So as this is it's pretty much as well coming down to a calibration, nobody's going to be able to calibrate anything as long as that jumper is not is there. So that is for that side. So when it comes down to this, obviously this is the thing in on it. 
So when it comes down to this, there's not much to it. We have an RS-485 uh, communication serial communication center. You can connect your old uh, RS-485 system in here for communications if you wish to. Uh, also, you have uh, four inputs and you have uh, four outputs, which are literally down here. And also the uh, uh, RJ-45 um, uh, socket in here which allows you to uh, connect to your laptop and also to your HMI and things like that in the future. And uh, when it comes down to Modbus RTUs and things like that, we're gonna check that out in upcoming videos. So that's pretty much, that is it. And there is nothing else in here that you really need to know. Another thing what I want to point out, which is going secretly with there. So hopefully you can see it yeah, right in there. There's a switch in there. This is a very, very important switch that you need to know. The first one, right, right down there, does do nothing. The second one switches between a uh, controller working with the PLC, which is by default, it will request the PLC. I'll show you in a minute what happens if it's not switched. And if you push it down, it will work independently. So uh, that's pretty much how uh, this controller would be. And when it comes down to the wiring, again, check out the manual as I left in the description below. You're definitely gonna find this kind of diagrams right in there and just literally follow exactly. You can't go wrong. International standard colors, well, usually are there. So uh, I am uh, using a beam load cell, uh, bending beam load cell, things like it's literally right, right here, just literally screwed on my, t on my table. And it's pretty much a quite straightforward follow of the coloring. And as you can see down here, you got the Sense Plus and the EXE. If you're using a uh, four wire, just uh, uh, link these guys out. Sense Plus with EXE Plus and uh, Sense Minus with uh, uh, Sense Minus with the EXE Minus. Just link them out and the rest of the color should be straight forward. So as you can see, uh, obviously the Siemens is giving you with their cable. Ignore that. Just follow the colors that uh, this is pretty much, uh, this is how your end is going to be right here. As you can see down here, my red, my white, and then this, uh, then I've got my uh, black. Uh, this this uh, linker in here, which links which I just already spoke. These two links in here, these are just literally linked out with a green and a black. As again, I, <laughs> I could show you which is which, but obviously it's really hard to see from this guy in here, which is which is again count. So signal minus is going to be one and two. So one two signal minus is my red. So uh, one two three with my signal plus, which is my white. And then is uh, sense minus, which is uh, just a linker, linking up with the EXC minus, and a sense plus with EXC plus. So uh, that's pretty much uh, how the wiring for actually loads out. It's very straightforward, nothing too too crazy. It couldn't get wrong. So uh, so let's power up. I quickly show you why a couple of errors. So. If the load cell is not connected to the controller, you will come up with the error called under voltage. So do make sure if you have under voltage flashing it may, and you're looking at it in your laptop and saying, what the hell is this, this error? It's to do with your load cell. Load cell is not there. It's coming up all red. So uh, as you can see now, I will power it up. See, I, I powered it up and controller, even though, as I have, you see, at the bottom, I have 24 volts going in it, but my controller is completely dead. So first thing, sure thing, is the controller is not working. If you miss that little thingy, that switch is not on, so it's not letting uh, that control be on unless it will see the uh, uh, the actual PLC itself. So let's uh, whoop, whoop. let's flip the switch down. They're hitting it quite nicely. Come on, I can't get it. I literally can't get it. Come on. There we go, we got it down. So let's put it down. Let's fire it up. And as you can see, the controller goes live and it will start up itself and it will start functioning as itself. So here we go. So as you can see, my load cell is happy. So my analog output is singing and dancing is, is in green. So uh, my, uh, my uh, load cell is all, uh, everything, uh, pretty much everything is in a good condition. Let's, let me put my hand on it. As you can see, my, I've been playing around already 
we'll check out those analog output later on whatever reason it goes in the error now you can check that out later on but i have as you can see you could set limits and things like that but anyway that's going to be for the future video so that's how we would work independently so let's shut it down now i need to push that switch back up uh, There you go, that was easier than the previous one. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug it on. And now, as you can see, it's allowing the controller to start up exactly the same way, but this time it's marrying up with the controller. And you're probably gonna see in a minute, my controller should uh, be happy because I already pre-configured it. So, and here we go. So uh, that's our uh, controller is ready, pretty much ready to go. So next up, uh, we're gonna need a uh, Ethernet cable, just a normal RJ45 Ethernet cable. And let's connect to Siva 2. We'll see you in a laptop. There we are. So this is a Siva 2 a V7. As you can see, the screen is open right now. Uh, as you can see right now on the top, it says uh, the default, which again can be, I do believe it can be changed. We're gonna check that on the next video. Default uh, IP address uh, should be 192.168.0.21. So that's the address you will require to uh, enter because you can go actually go into communications and network settings. You can actually change the address where how you want to communicate. If somebody has changed it, you can't change it from the so from this software. As far as I know, maybe there's something I'm missing. But as far as I know, I can't change it from here. So, but I do believe there's a way to change it from HMI. So we're gonna check that out in the next video. I'm not too hundred percent sure. So by default, usually people should not need should should not need to change this address, which is leave us here because it's easier for everybody to know which is it. So the key in here to make sure the 192.168 and a zero, it is your uh, Ethernet card's uh, IP address as well. So if you quickly go to a uh, uh, CMD. Just go into your command port and I type in IP config. Where did it go? IP config. And in there, I've got two internet cards. Again, one of them is I'm using for my standard internet, and obviously the other one is my uh, my my what I use for work, which is for my uh, uh, controls, uh, controllers, and things like that. And I have set that as static in here. So again, this is one nine two one six eight zero. If it is 192.168.1, you will not be able to connect to it. So uh, do make sure this is this is very crucial for you to make sure that is the case. So and to really make it static, I'll quickly show you. If you go in the control panel, so in control panels, go straight to your uh, network. Uh, choose the card you're in. Obviously, you're going to be probably having one or two. I'm not sure. In the properties, go into Internet Protocol version 4 and change that to use the following IP address. And so make sure we will always keep that, we'll not change it. So, uh, so yeah, that's how you do that. So, from there on, you if all goes well, everything's set up very well with the IP and communications. Uh, by clicking online, it should take you online. And at the moment, as you can see, my piece is showing me all sorts of messages down here because what I need to do, I need to uh, go into communications. Retrieve data from the actual controller itself. So there we go. It pumps the controller out. All the messages are gone. So from there on, uh, you can pretty much start doing a whole lot of stuff in here. Again, even the calibration alone should take a one full video for you to show you how you can do it from here. But again, you can all do all that from HMI if you don't want to pay for this software. So, but again, it all depends how you're using this card. So uh, from here. You can you color, pro, uh, calibrate everything, set everything up, so set limits, set everything up as you need it from right here. And there's other bits and pieces you can do that you cannot do it from the HMI. So uh, so yeah, this software is mainly for that purpose. In next video, you probably want to see why. So uh, so yeah, and from there on again, if you go in the basic parameters, you can really see how your uh, systems has been set up. And you can start changing data in here and then transfer across. And I will leave the video in the description below from Siemens. They have done it. They have a really good video. So I will leave for you guys if you want to use this software. So uh, there's a little screen in here. Just to double check. Make sure our load cell is working. Here we go. So uh, let me put a, a one kilo weight on that one. Here you go. It shows one kilo. My load cell is working perfectly well. 
And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. For now, for the basic introduction to get yourself communicating, this is what you need to do. So in here, in the messages, if there is any issues and things like that with your uh, card, to, you will be able to find that issue, these messages right down here for diagnostics purposes. As you can see, I don't really have any problems with it, as far as I can see. So yeah, so that will do, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I put, I did something. I don't know what I did. Ah, we'll fix that later on. And that will do, ladies and gentlemen, for this video. It's all about getting your uh, set settled in. So the wiring, explain you how the controller itself works, how to get yourself going. Introduction to Civil Tool V7. And that will do. So in the next video, we're going to be going a bit further. We're going to be getting the program and loading into our controller and our HMI and have a look at how that works. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like. Do subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Comment below and I'll answer the questions as soon and as accurate as I can. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.